Clutter is personal. Solution is based on the personality. Success will be seen differently for everybody. Clutter cleaning is less about the stuff and more about the emotions that are signed with it. There's many ways to be happy. You can do whatever you like. You don't have to be ready. You just gotta try. Messiness is life. Messiness is part of creating order and messiness has its time and place. Some tasks are messy and some tasks are required order. An organized home is where you can find what you need with a minimal effort. In today's social media world, we see posts about beautiful homes that are magazine ready, which makes sense from the creator part, but also gives a false reality and pressure that a decluttered and minimalist home should always look like that. I'm not talking about the things that are gathering dust and waiting for a decision about what their purpose will be. I'm talking about the mess that happens when living a life and creating, cooking and simply just living. Order and messiness has its time and place. Some tasks are messy and some tasks are require order. Creating, cooking and doing art comes with a mess. Resting and doing focus-oriented tasks like doing text or in my case editing a video <laughs> is supported by order. To declutter your home you have to know the why. Do I want more time for my kids? Do I want less stress? Do I want to simplify things so I can reduce chores? Do I want to have time for hiking, yoga, painting and friends? Once you have the why, accept the process. It's like with kids. If you explain the why, they are more likely to follow through. I took decluttering as an opportunity to grow as a person and I sort through my belongings and my feelings and issues. Judgment and guilt will not solve the issue. The only way to get rid of that feeling is to get rid of what is causing it. If you keep things out of guilt, every time you see that item, it will remind you of guilt. What can slow down the decluttering process? Indecision. Solution, create a wanna get rid of pile. And I will go into details a little bit later about that. The second one is perfectionism. Realistic expectations, little better is still better than raising the bar where we paralyzed to start. The third one, can't stay focused. Set aside distraction and prepare mentally by watching and listening to encouraging content. Sort of work up yourself to the starting point and dive in. The fourth one is uncomfortable of change. Clutter puts your mind into overdrive, causing your senses to focus on what isn't important, leading to stress. The fifth one, things are entering faster than living. Decluttering less than what's coming into the home will sabotage the process and will discourage from the process. The sixth one, attachment. We give value to our things that are higher than realistic. Some people, when they are selling their stuff, asking for a price, they think it's worth not what others pay for that. Things can serve you or hold you back. Is it a good memory that it brings back to my life? Is it something I really actually look at and enjoy it? 
Finding the why of the attachment will free the soul from being trapped. It is kept because it's an unprocessed feeling. Here are some questions that helped me to declutter my home. The number one is, is it a natural material? If it's not, it's not great for my hat. So let's donate, recycle. I also apply this rule as I shop and I promise you, it will reduce your shopping habit 80%. All you have to do, just check the material on the clothing and it will give you <laughs> a fast decision what to buy and what not to buy. There's a book that opened my eyes for the toxins in the home. It's called The Slow Death by the rubber duck i got rid of 90 percent of my things in the bathroom after reading it and i never repurchased those items again the next question is it hard to clean <laughs> that's a big one and that's eliminating a bunch of other things that i bring into my home it really helps to make a faster decision the next question do i own a duplicate do i enjoy this item do i use it do i have something similar is it hard to replace if it's a clothing item does it coordinate at least with three other items does it flatter or feel comfortable so these are a few questions that you can ask for yourself as you declutter your home Don't forget to take breaks between decluttering to avoid burnout. To break any kind of tasks at home, I really enjoy to drink some tea or just having a meal that is in a manner where I rest. Before I'm continuing with the declutter, I am going to prepare a bar and that is in a draft mode <laughs> on my website and I will release that really soon. It is coming next with the blueberry muffins. I only use just mandel dates and I have some dried papayas, some cocoa butter and it came out uh, a little bit crumbly at first so I added more cocoa butter to it and that's what I bought in that store the walnut really complemented this whole texture and i really love the cocoa nibs in there as a crunchy texture and it turned out really really tasty and this will give me more energy to declutter <laughs>
continuing the decluttering in the pantry and I have some spices that I made so this was last week I put it in the dehydrator all the turnip and carrots and celery I will have this on my website when I don't know <laughs> but I will put it up as soon as possible because I know you guys want to make that maybe on the summer when we have all this fresh vegetables so basically I just dehydrate them and then I'm grinding them to the decluttering another step that was helpful to me when I was in the decluttering process I did it I just call it in layers because it's kind of like peeling an onion <laughs> you can go and remove first that it's easy to remove from your home I like the feeling of how the room looked and that gave me a push to continue and that led me to the point I started to see my belongings with less emotion and a more realistic way and I started to detach from the feeling of guilt that came with it. My focus started to shift on what I wanted to keep and what was useful instead of what I want to get rid of. As I progressed with the layer of decluttering, I still had items that were harder to decide that went to the I wanna get rid of pile. That pile was to have to speed up the decision and stay in the flow of decluttering. Once I saw how big that pile was, I started to compare them to each other, one started to look less worthy to keep. Each day I went back to the pile and sort of I put the order on them what is the easiest to let go of. Towards to the end it made me realize I can let go more so the pile quickly got out of my house only to keep two items that I actually ended up getting rid of a few months later. <laughs> Today I was focusing on the pantry to fix that part of the house because I have to prepare a tons of food for tomorrow because my boys are going to leave for camp and they have to have gluten and dairy free food because of their allergies. So a nice clean and decluttered pantry will support me tomorrow for this big task. When I planned what kind of food I'm going to make for the boys, I had to keep in mind a lot of different things. Of course, it has to be something that they can eat <laughs> for their diet, but also I added a little bit more carbohydrate uh, to their meal because they are going to have longer times between meals and then they're not going to have that much time to eat. So there's gonna be an, a full-blown blown fun event and week for them but i know it's it's going to lack of the time to just sit down properly eat a meat so i'm preparing food that is easy to grab and they can eat it everywhere and it will keep them fed well for a longer time so i was using a little bit more potatoes and carbohydrates like making sandwiches so it will keep their stomach full a little bit longer 
and I'm making some schnitzels and then yeah the other one that I have to keep in mind they're not going to have refrigerator so <laughs> that was the trickiest one to come up with food that they can have for a couple of days with an iced cooler bag and then we're gonna go there and drop off the rest of the food for the rest of the week for them so that's how we solve the the food issue to them with allergies we did this last year as well and it worked out perfect and also the new thing that i did this year you know those containers i shared that a couple of videos ago i saved those you know when you buy the blueberries and strawberries so those containers i saved those to store food in there so they don't have to worry to bring back the containers also it is very helpful that the sandwiches are not squished because those containers hold up pretty fairly well this cutting machine is greatly helping my work for especially when i prepare more food but i can use this for when i have a bread that i just made or store-bought bread i can slice meat with that it's just really really handy i also i'm going to make some pizza uh, to the boys and that's something i will drop off later on when they are at the camp that's something i'm just going to bake until the halfway done and i'm going to put that in a swilling bag and put it in the freezer and on the day when we're going to take it to them i'm just going to plop some pepperoni on it and just pop it in the oven and that's something that they can eat there i'm pretty sure they will appreciate the fact that they're going to have some pizza I also love to make these sandwiches I like to put as many things in there as I can just for taste wise and nutrition wise And as I said these containers are so handy so if you have to pack something like where it's more troublesome to um, bring it back home or you really want to just have less weight in your bag because that was another concern like the weight how much they have to take so the next sandwich uh, this is the cord cut I made uh, maybe eight months ago or one year ago we put it into the freezer but uh, it's a pork belly and I had lots of garlic and Hungarian paprika on it and I cooked that for like 12 hours or something like that and it just tastes so wonderful and of course I had to make some lunch while I was preparing all this food but that was easy I just made some sausages I'm so glad my boys love sausages because it's a time saver and I don't have to worry about that much about the lunch simplifying things in the kitchen it starts with the recipes so i'm trying to use simple ingredients so i don't have that many variety of the flowers so it makes it easier and also at the beginning as i was shredding the cooked potato basically i created with the same basic recipe two different kind of meals so one was the pizza the other one i just fried them as like um fritter 
potato fritters, or I don't know how should I call them, <laughs> but basically it's just have some eggs in there, and then the cooked shredded to, uh, potatoes, and then nemesty flour. So it's very easy and simple, and I will make some sausages to go with that, and a little bit of a lettuce and salads. Um, and then the other half of the recipe, I just added the yeast basically, and I made pizza, and I added the cooked potato to the pizza dough because it's gonna be a couple of days when they're going to have this pizza with them so that way even if it's a little bit drier the potato adds some moist to it so it will uh, taste a little bit more fresh I also like to prepare some schnitzels for this occasion because if I chop them up I can uh, add some salad next to it and I can just serve it with other vegetables basically so um, that simplifies a lot of things If you are waiting for the bloopers, yes, it's coming. <laughs> I gathered all the mistakes I made throughout the video and I hope you have a good laugh. <laughs>